Okay, everybody, uh, this lesson is probabilities of disjoint and overlapping events. I'm in the office, so you may hear some chatter in the background here. So, uh, All right, let's go ahead and get started here. So a compound event is uh, the union or the intersection of two events. Okay, so the union of A and B is everything that's within A and B. So union just means everything in A and B. So something like that. So if I said the union of A and B, it would be all of these points right here. Okay, that's union. The intersection of A and B is where the two overlap or share the point. So here would be the overlapping part. So this is represented as the intersection of A and B right there. Okay, sometimes the intersection of A and B is empty. So if you have a, a picture that looks like that where A and B don't ever overlap, so the intersection is empty on those. Okay, so um, uh, when, it's, uh, when they don't overlap, that's just what's called disjoint. And when they do overlap, that's over overlapping part. So that's where we get the probabilities of disjoint and overlapping events. Okay. That's where that title comes from. So the probability of compound events can be found by, by this uh, formula here. So if A and B are two events, whether they overlap or not overlap, then the probability of A or B, and notice the pivot word is or, is uh, the probability of A plus the probability of B. So we find each probability and then we subtract the intersection part, the probability of A and B. That's just the intersection part. So sometimes that part is zero. So so over here, because look, if we go back to these figures right here, the probability of A or B, we'd find the probability of A, we'd add the probability of B, and if they overlap, then it's being counted twice. So that's why we take off the intersection once right here, okay? Over here, if we did the probability of A or B, we just add these two guys, and they, they don't overlap, so there's no points that are counted twice right there. So um, that's where we get our formula right here. We subtract off the intersection part once because it gets counted twice, okay? So here, let's try some examples. So a card is randomly drawn from a deck of uh, 52 cards find each probability okay so uh, the first one is uh, find the probability that uh, it's a face card or a spade okay so we're gonna let a be the face card and B be the be the spade okay so the probability of a or B is the probability of a plus the probability of B minus their intersection okay so there's 12 face cards here's all the face cards in a deck okay there's um there's four kings, there's four queens, and four jacks, so that means 12, okay? And there's 13 spades all the way from ace through king, there's 13 of them. And there's three of them that are both uh, kings and, or I'm sorry, that are both spades and face cards. So this is where we're going to have to subtract it off, um, uh, 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 subtract off the intersection. Sorry, brain freeze right there. So the probability of, of A is 12 out of 52, because there's 12 face cards out of 52. There's 13 spades out of 52 cards. And then we subtract off the overlapping part, the, the three cards that are spades and face cards. Okay, so we get uh, we get common denominator right there, and we get 22 out of 52. Of course, reduce that right there. And then your book would probably give you a decimal on that. I think the decimal on that is, I don't know, it's a little bit less than a half, so something like 0.42, I'm guessing, 42-ish. So just, if you see a decimal, then they did uh, uh, 11 divided by 26, okay? So um, I find that your book does that a lot. So here, let's find this, the probability that it's a 10 or a face card, okay? So we'll let uh, A equal the event that it's a 10 and B be the face cards, okay? So there's our magic formula formula right there. All right, so there's four tens, there's 12 face cards, and there's no, uh, there's zero that are both tens and face cards, because a 10 is not a face card. So, so that's where we subtract off that zero out of 52, okay? So when we add those together, we get 16 out of 52. Whoops, I forgot a fraction bar right there. Let me include that in there. So again, they might give you a decimal on that. So the decimal on that is going to be uh, whatever 4 divided by by 13 is. So let's see, did I get that? Yeah, so 0.308 right there, okay? All right, 
Uh, how about uh, the probability that it's an ace or an eight? Okay, again, we're going to get a zero on this because there's zero aces that are eights right there. So there's four aces, there's four eights. So you're going to go four out of 52 plus four out of 52 is eight out of 52. And then four goes into eight two times, four goes into 52 13 times, so two thirteenths. Again, they might change that to a decimal, whatever two divided by 13 is right there. So. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, so how about this? It's a 10 or diamond, okay? All right, so there's four 10s, there's 13 diamonds, and there's that one that's a 10 of diamonds. So, so here we go. We get uh, four out of 13 on that, okay? All right, so this example is example three on page 708. If you're in my class, I just want you to write this down right here, and you don't have to copy down this big old fatty word problem right here, okay? So of the 200 students in the senior class, 113 are either varsity athletes or are on the honor roll. There are 74 seniors who are, whoops, I forgot a V right there, who are varsity. It's going to be forgotten in the rest of them, I think, unless I, I thought I fixed that, so it might be fixed in the other slides. That are varsity athletes and 51 seniors who are on the honor roll. Okay, so there are 74 seniors who are varsity athletes and 51 seniors who are on the honor roll. What is the probability that a randomly selected senior is both a varsity athlete and on the honor roll? Okay, so the key words are this or right here and this and. So when we use this formula right here, our formula, this is going to be the or part and this is going to be the and part right here. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for that and part. So let A be the senior uh, varsity athletes and B be the honor roll students right here. So then our formula is uh, the probability of A or B. Okay, that's this right here. This or right here is going to be my 113 out of 200. So that's going to be this side right here. Okay, and then the probability of A is going to be my, my uh, varsity athletes right here. So my varsity athletes are uh, this 74 right here. And then this uh, B is going to be the honor roll. So that's going to be the 51. Okay, we're looking for this guy. That's what it's asking. What's the probability that a randomly selected senior is both on the varsity athlete and he's on the honor roll or she's on the honor roll? Okay, so... Uh, let's go ahead and insert that. So this is going to count for this, which is this 113 out of 200. And this is what we're looking for right here. So our unknown is this piece right here. Okay, so we're looking for this. So what I'm going to do is add this to over on this side, and I'm going to subtract this 113 over 200 and put it on that side right there. Okay, and now it's just arithmetic right there. And then 4 goes into this 3 times, 4 goes into that 50 times, so 3 fiftieths which is equal to 0 0.06, okay? All right, okay, so in, uh, in the last section, you guys, suppose 32 seniors are in the band and 64 seniors are in the band or on the honor roll. What's the probability that a randomly selected senior is both uh, in the band and on the honor roll, okay? So there's our pivot words right there, this or, Okay, so that's going to be the 64 seniors that are in the band or on the honor roll right here. So we're going to go let A equal the band and B equal the honor roll. So the probability of A or B is our formula right there. Okay, so this or part is going to represent the 64 out of the 200 seniors right there. Okay, so let's, and then um, uh, the 32 comes from uh, the band members. So there's 32 seniors that are in the band. Okay, now B is the honor roll. Well, where is that honor roll located? Well, that's located in the beginning of the word problem. 51 seniors are on the honor roll. So this one's still 51 over 200 right there. Okay, and then uh, we're again looking for this. So I'm going to add this over here and subtract the 64. So, oh, I, I did, uh, actually I added these two guys first, then I'll add it over. Okay, so there we go. So um, uh, I added this over here and then I subtracted 64 from the 83 and got 19. 19 out of 200 right here is equal to 0 0.095, so tenths, hundreds, thousandths. So this is 95 thousandths right there, okay? Either one of these are okay for me on that one right there, all right? All right, and then uh, with last piece, you guys, the probability of a compound event. 
um, I'm sorry, of a complement. Did I say compound? Complement. The probability of the complement of A is written like this. The probability of A bar, that's the complement of A, is just 1 minus whatever the probability of A is. A is going to be the complement of of A and consists of all outcomes that are not in A. Okay, so this will make sense right here. So, sorry, I couldn't uh, uh, get my, my textbook to on, uh, upload on my on my uh, desktop, so I had to take a picture and send this picture to me. So this is a picture from page 709. Okay, so when two six-sided die are rolled, uh, whoops, this should say there, uh, there are 36 possible outcomes. Okay, and so usually I represent this as an ordered pair. Um, and so I, I'll do this as 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, 1 comma 4, 1 comma 5, 1 comma 6, okay? Or we can get a 2 on the first dice, a 1 on the second dice, a 2 on the first dice, a 2 on the second, all the way down to a 2 and a 6. Here's our column for a 3 on the first dice with 1 through 6 on the second dice, a 4 on the first dice with 1 through 6 on the second dice, all the way to a 6 on the first dice, 1 through 6 on the second dice. So there's 36 different outcomes. Find each probability, okay? Now we're rolling two dice, okay? When two six-sided six die are rolled right here, what's the sum that is not 6? Well, it's something over 36, and what you can do is count all the ones that are not 36 or you can just count the ones that are 36. The ones that are 30, I'm sorry, the ones that are 6 are, there's only 5 of them. Okay, so let's see. So here's one that's 6. Uh, here's one that's 6. So there's 2. Here's another one that's 6. 3, 4, and then 5. There's 5 of them that are 6. So we can use the complement rule and do 1 minus the probability that they are 6. Okay, so. Uh, the complement of it, that it's not 6 is that they are 6. So the complement rule is a little bit quicker, so it's a nice advantage. So 1 minus uh, 5 out of the 36 is 31 out of the 36, which is uh, uh, 0.861. And it kept going right there, so it's approximately equal to 0.861. All right, let's do the complement rule on this one. Ooh, I get some cake. Uh, the sum is less than or equal to 9. So there's, uh, there's less numbers of the sum that are uh, uh, greater than 9. So the complement of less than or equal to 9 is greater than 9. So if we count up the ones that are greater than 9, there's 6 of them. This one is greater than 9. That's 12. 6 plus 6 is 12. That's 11. That's 10. Okay, I'm not going to count that one because that's 9. So there's 1, 2, 3. Four, five, and finally six. There are six of them that have greater than nine. So the probability that the sum is less than or equal to nine is the is one minus the complement, and the complement is the sum is greater than nine. Okay, so we do one minus the six of them out of thirty-six, which is this is thirty-six out of thirty-six. Okay, like right here is 36 out of 36 minus 5 out of 36 is 31 out of 36. Okay, so we get 30 out of 36, which reduces to 5, 6, which uh, decimal is 0.83333. Okay, I hope that made sense, and if you're in my class, that would be your assignment. Take care.